in the previous class we have completed numericals uh, which are based on combination of uh, resistors okay today we are going to see uh, where there is a current involved okay so uh, this is a battery and the battery is supplying current to some some resistors and there will be current potential difference so few things we will do so let us say that this battery is 5 volt and here you have a 2 ohm resistor and like a 8 ohm resistor and they are asking the following things they want to know the current flowing in the circuit now the same current will obviously flow through both of them they'll ask what is the potential difference across this they can call this as v1 and the potential difference across the other resistor okay so uh, very simple to calculate. The total resistance of the circuit will be 2 plus 8, that will be 10 ohms. And we apply Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So 5 is equal to I into 10. So I will be 0 0.5 amperes. So this gives you one answer that is, the current in the circuit is uh, 0.5 amperes. Now, if you want to know the potential over here, then again, we can apply the same thing. So I can say V1 is I into R1 because the current flowing is same. So V1 will be 0 0.5 into two, that will be one volt. Okay, so the, the answer to this is one volt. Now, if this is one volt and five volt is across the whole, then this has to be four volts, okay? We can get that same answer by using this. So this is 0 0.5 into eight, that will be four volts, okay? So this was easy to solve. Now, if we uh, do the same thing, Okay, uh, but rather than having this res resistors in series, what if they are parallel to each other? Okay, so let's try. So this is 5 volt, this is uh, 2 ohms, and this is 8 ohms. Now here again, we'll ask I. But now, rather than asking V, okay, because that will be same for both of them, because here the voltage drop was different. These were two different points. But you know that the current is going to branch out over here. Okay, so this is going to be I1. This is going to be I2. Okay, the current will be divided. Okay, so before we come to that point, let us find the effective resistance first. So this is one by two and one by eight. LCM is eight, two fours are. So this is five by eight. So R is eight by five, 1.6 ohms, okay? So the resistance over here is 1.6 ohms. Now V is equal to IR. Here we are going to have it difficult to do the calculation we can make the calculation easier by considering it as say eight volts okay now we have uh, here v is equal to ir so this is i into 1.6 so this will be 8 upon 1.6 80 upon 16 so this will be equal to 5 amperes okay so the current is 5 amperes now right now if you want to find i1 and i2 it's a very important question and it's a very uh, something that is something will require your application of knowledge so 5 amperes is the current now 5 amperes flows over here some part of it will go up some part of it will go down i have one question for you okay 
uh, say yes or no? Will the current be divided equally, like two point five, two point five? No. What? No. Okay, good. So you know that the resistors are different. So therefore, the current will not get divided equally. If the resistance up and down was same, then the current would have got divided uh, equally. Now the current will be divided into two parts: a bigger part uh, and a smaller part. So again, my question to you is: Where do you think a bigger part of current will flow? Will the bigger portion of current flow through eight ohm or two ohms? Eight ohm. Two ohms. Okay, one person is saying eight, another person is saying two. The correct answer is two. Okay, so the logic behind that is resistance is obstructing the flow of current. So where you have lesser resistance, there will be more current flowing through that. Okay, so more current will flow through two, and less current will flow through eight. Okay, now coming ahead. uh before we move to the way in which we calculate the current uh i am going to explain you something now these resistors which is 2 and 8 are actually in the ratio 1 is to 4 okay the resistors are in the ratio 1 is to 4 so the current and resistance which has a opposite nature the current will be in the inverse ratio 4 is to 1 Okay, so that's the logic, and how do we decide that? So remember this: I have divided this into one, two, three, four, five parts because the ratio is four is to one, so there has to be five parts to it. Okay, now these are four parts, and this will be one part. so that is how we get to this this is four part and this is one part okay so if you divide 5 amperes into five part each part will be how much if you divide 5 amperes into five parts each part will be how much one one ampere one amp one amp and so on so therefore the four part would be 4 amperes so therefore the current i1 is 4 amperes and current i2 will be 1 ampere so that means 1 ampere will flow through 8 ohm and 5 ampere will flow through 1 ohm or uh, so 2 ohms so that is the division of the current okay now the same thing we are going to see it in terms of physics formulas okay so let me take you to this particular this zoom out a bit okay we know that v is equal to ir the ohms law now since they are connected in parallel 8 volt applies to both so this is 8 volt and the current is i1 and my resistor is 2 ohms so this is 2 so therefore i1 will be 8 by 2 i1 will be 4 amperes in another part we'll have this will be i2 and r2 so this will be i2 into 8 so i2 will be 1 ampere okay so that is how we can get the values of current so this is easy to follow okay right any questions so far so again uh, we'll have to find the current now they can also give you a, a ammeter okay just to show you that that's measuring current over there and uh, so what are the values that we need to find uh, we need to find uh, the total resistance in the circuit we need to find the current in the circuit uh, we have to find the potential across four ohms uh, then we'll have to find the current flowing into the 3 ohm uh, resistor okay so let's say this is a question where you to find all this 
So first thing is we need to find the total resistance. Now for that, what I will do is I'll call this one upon R1. We can't call every resistance as R. So I will want to find this. So this is one by three, one by six. So the LCM is six. So this is two plus one. That is three by six, one by two. So R1 is two ohms. Okay, so we get R1 as two ohms. Then the total resistance R is four plus two, and that is equal to six ohm. Something that we have done in our previous class. So the total effective resistance is six. Then we apply Ohm's law. So V is equal to I R. So here you have three. This is I into six. So I will be 0.5 amperes. Okay, now 0.5 will give you your first answer. Answer number, uh, sorry, answer number two. Your first answer is this. Okay, the total resistance. Now we want to find the voltage across the four ohm resistor. That also is uh, easy. We have V equal to IR. So I is 0 0.5 into 4. So V is equal to 2 volts. We call it as V1. Okay, so that is your answer number 3. Right. Then we need uh, again the same thing. So here, students, we apply the same logic. So you, you get uh, a good hang over this. So what is happening is 0 0.5 ampere reaches here and it is getting divided into two parts such that one part goes to three ohm, one part goes to six ohm. What have we studied? That the ratio of the resistance is three is to six, which is one is to two. So ratio of the current, that is I1 is to I2, will be 2 is to 1. That means we have to divide it into three parts. So here, 0. 0.5 has to be divided into three parts. So if you want to divide 0. 0.5 into three parts, each part will be equal to 0. 0.5 upon 3. Okay, and two parts of it is going to flow through three ohm because that's a lesser resistance. Two parts of it. So the current that is actually going to flow through three ohm is two times 0. 0.5 upon three. Like that's one by three, which is 0. 0.33 amperes. Okay, so we know the answer 0. 0.33 amperes. But how can we do it in terms of the physics formula? So let's see that. I'll just zoom out from here. Okay. So what logic I'm using? So I'm using this Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that V is equal to IR. I know the current is 0.5. And the total resistance of this combination we know is 2. So 0.5 into 2, so V is equal to 1 volt. Now, what is 1 volt? 1 volt is the potential across these resistors. So that will be across 6, and the same thing will be across 3. Now that I have got the potential across the resistors, I will use V equal to IR. That is, 1 is equal to I into 3. So I will be one by three. I again get the same answer. So that is 0 0.33 amperes. Remember, don't leave your answer in fraction. Uh, leave it correct up to two decimal places. Okay, so this is the answer. Any questions you have? Now this question, we are introducing what is called as internal resistance. 
and therefore we will have emf as 4 volt internal resistance as 1 ohm okay so the following things uh, will be asked uh, let me just type it out uh, over here they want us to calculate the uh, current in the circuit they want us to calculate the terminal potential difference also the potential drop inside the cell is asked and we can also calculate the potential drop across the 3 ohm resistor okay so these are the things which we will have to calculate in this particular question fine so the total external resistance is 3 plus 9 uh, that will be equal to 12 ohms okay let me just change this value uh, let's take it as uh, 6 okay for our convenience this is 9 ohms over here now remember i'm just making up these questions so to get a correct uh, a number which is a easier number to calculate i'm changing these values the formula that we are using is e is equal to i big r plus small r so remember this is called as a emf okay and uh, we write e and v separately whenever there is a uh, internal resistance otherwise there is no difference in this so this is 4 this is i this is 9 and this is 1 so we know that the current is 0 0.4 amperes okay so this is the answer number one so the current flowing is 0 0.4 amps okay now moving ahead we have to find the terminal potential difference so uh, this is v is equal to ir just to give you a recap a little bit so e is equal to i r plus small r so i into big r and then you have i into small r now i into big r is called as v which is called as terminal potential difference and i into small small r is called as small v which is a potential drop inside the cell so this will be 0.4 into 9 so that will be 3.6 volt okay and small v is i into small r uh, this is 1 ohm so that will be i'm sorry just a minute so this we get it as 0.4 uh, volt so that's the potential drop inside the cell now, number four, the potential drop across the three ohm resistor. We want this. So that's again uh, Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. So that will be 0 0.4 times 3 will be 1.2 volt. Okay. So with introduction of the internal resistance, our calculation changes uh, slightly. Okay. So there is uh, there are two resistors which are parallel to each other. Uh, this is two ohms and this is given as R. There is a four ohm resistor and then you have a battery. <coughs> so this current is 0 0.25 amperes, okay? And this is 2 volt and 3 ohm. So the information that we have is E is equal to 2 volt. Internal resistance is 3 ohms. Uh, current in the circuit is 0 0.25 amperes. 
So they have asked us to calculate the following potential drop across the four ohm resistor. They want this. Uh, so let's do that. I'll do it here. So V is equal to IR. Now we know that uh, this 0.25 will also flow here. So that will be 0.25 into four. So that is one volt. Okay. They are asking the potential drop across the internal resistance of the cell. So that is potential drop inside the cell. What, what I have uh, written over here, the potential drop inside the cell can also be written as potential drop across the internal resistance. So this is equal to I into small r, that is 0.25 into three. So this will be uh, 0.75 volt. That's the second answer. The third answer is potential drop across the R ohm or two ohm of the resistor. Okay. So we so, need, yeah. In the first one, uh, when you take R, R, why do you only take four ohm? Why don't you, why don't we have to also take the two ohm and the R ohm? No, the, the question says, uh, uh, question 28 says, calculate the potential drop across the four ohm resistor. Oh, okay. thank you. So, yeah, so they are asking us to calculate, like, you know, if you take a voltmeter and uh, attach the probes of the voltmeter like this, what will it read? Yeah. Okay. And the third question now is asking the potential drop across them. So just to take you back to, uh, you know, what we did earlier. So I'll just uh, quickly do that all over again. So this is I R I V. Remember this R is a formula, which means the total external resistance and not this R. So this is big V and small V. So we know this is two volt. Okay, the EMF is two volt and the internal resistance is uh, 0.75. So this will be 1.25. Okay, now 1.25 is the voltage outside for an external circuit. And remember that voltage is across this, the external circuit. So here we already have that is one volt, okay? So it's like, uh, I'll just draw this again for your understanding. Okay, please ask any questions that you have. So this V is 1.25 volt. This is the four ohm resistor and we know that there is a voltage drop of one volt over here. So this is two ohm and this is uh, R ohms. So obviously the potential drop is 0 0.25 volt over here. Okay, so the answer is potential drop across uh, two ohm or R ohm is 1.25 minus one, which is 0 0.25 volt. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> and the fourth part they want is V is equal to IR. I mean, the value of this R. So now we know that the potential drop is 0 0.25. And uh, okay, let's say that uh, we don't know the I also. We don't know the current flowing over here. So we can find the current flowing through the two ohm. So let's say into two. So 1.25 divided by two, I call it as I1, 0 0.125 amperes. So what is happening uh, over here is 0 0.25 ampere is flowing, okay? Out of that, uh, 1.25 is flowing up. 
So the current that will be flowing down will be I minus I1, that is 0.25 minus 0.125, is 0.125 amperes. This is I2. And now we again use that formula. We have V equal to IR. So we have uh, V is uh, 2. Okay, sorry, V is 0.25. And then I is 1.25 and R. So what is R? 0.25 upon 1.25. So R will be equal to 2 ohms. Sorry, this is 0.125. So R will be equal to 2 ohms. So we get the fourth answer that is 2 ohms. Now I can solve the same thing in another way. Okay, let me show you how. So E is equal to I big R plus small r. And E is two, I we know 0.25. And let us call this R as some R dash. And internal resistance is three ohm. So this becomes eight, do you agree with that? Uh, 0.25 goes on the other side. We'll make this eight. So R dash is five ohm. What is this? This is the total external resistance. Okay, that means uh, now I can just erase it to use it for this purpose. This resistance is five ohms. Now students, uh, you understand from our previous class that how do you get five ohm? Four plus the total resistance of this. So if you call the total resistance of this as some R2, so we have R2 plus four as five. So we get R2 as one ohm. The total resistance of this is one ohm. What do you mean by that? So one upon R2 is one upon two plus one over R. So one upon one is one over two plus one over R. That's one minus half, that's half. And we get R as two ohms, okay? That's another way to arrive at the same answer. Any questions, anyone? Okay, so in this question, they have given us all this information and they are asking us to calculate the total resistance in the circuit. Now, uh, in this, uh, you have these two in uh, uh, parallel to each other. So this is one over R1 and they have already named the resistors as R1, R2. So I can call it as R prime. Uh, this is 40, 4 plus 1, 5 over 40, which is 1 by 8. So R prime is 8 ohm. Now these three are again parallel to each other. So you can call it as R double prime, 30, 20, and 60. The LCM is 60. So this is uh, 2, 3, and 1. So that will give us six upon 60. So R double prime is 10 ohm. So therefore the total external resistance is eight plus 10. That will be 18 ohms, okay? The next part of the question is what will be the resistance of the ammeter? So for that we have V is equal to IR. This is 1.8, this is I, and this is 18. So this will be 1.8 upon 8, uh, 18. So 0 0.1 ampere will be the answer. Okay, so, you know, it looks difficult, but compared to the previous question, it is much easier. Okay.
is A, B, C, and D. The question has asked you to calculate the resistance between A and B. So when you are talking about resistance between A and B, so we know that the current is entering A. So when the current enters A, it gets split into this I1 and I2. So the way I told you last class, the same current I2 flows through all these resistors. So we, we take these three in series. And I2, uh, I1 will flow through this resistor. So that's standalone. So here what we do okay, is, sure, got it. yeah, we assume like, you know, this is point A, this is point B, this is two ohms and two and two and two will make it uh, six. So here you have six ohm. So the, the rib, these two are now in parallel. So one by R is one by two plus one by six, three plus one, four by six. So R is six by four, which will be 1.5 ohms. That will be the final answer. Okay. okay thank you so much.